another upgrade on the Mini, we're going to be upgrading from the wheel bolts to wheel studs. So for anyone who's familiar with any sort of German car, you know that most of them come with wheel bolts instead of studs. And while that works perfectly fine, there are a lot of good reasons to update to studs. Today we're going to go over some of the reasons why I'm upgrading to studs, and then I'm going to quickly show you how to install them. It's super, super easy. Anyone could do this. It's going to make things a lot easier for you over the life of the car. So firstly, we will explain the differences just for those of you who don't know. So this is a wheel bolt. It bolts your wheel on just like any other way of fastening the wheel by clamping the wheel up against the hub. The problem with a bolt versus a stud is the same reason people upgrade to head studs over head bolts. As you are clamping this in, you are applying a stretching force on the bolt, which is what's clamping it down, but you're also applying a rotational force. So you're putting torque on that bolt so it is being stressed perpendicular to its axis and it's going to be stressed on its axis. So these are not going to as nicely tight down. You're not going to get as consistent a torque across all four bolts. So the wheel might be clamped unevenly. It's also frustrating when you're doing brake jobs and when you're changing your wheels out because the brake rotor has to line up perfectly with the hole on the hub and then you have the wheel out here on the sandwich. It's even worse if you have wheel spacers. So you have four different holes that have to stay perfectly lined up. So a lot of people use a tool. It's a very, very long threaded rod that you thread into one spot, mount the wheel with it, and then you take it back out and replace it with a bolt when you're done. I have no idea why the Germans like wheel bolts so much better than studs, but studs are a common upgrade for people who are changing their wheels a lot or who people want the added strength and consistent clamping force that the stud offers. One problem I was having is I was having wheel bolts that were breaking. I broke two of these aftermarket wheel bolts and I broke one factory wheel bolt before I even put the wheel spacers on. And I think part of the problem is just an uneven clamping force. And if one of these bolts is torqued a little bit weird or you get some binding in between the cone here and the wheel and then keep torquing it, you're just going to put a lot of extra stress on this and they're going to break. Studs should not break on you. Studs should be a lot stronger, a lot safer, and it's just going to be a lot easier for me. The only drawback is A, you have to spend a little bit more money versus the wheel bolts that you already have. B, it'll technically add a very small amount of weight. As you can see, as you compare the two, the stud is going to be a tiny bit longer, but the head of this bolt is a little bit bigger, so I feel like it's probably going to be a wash. It's nothing that you're ever going to notice. But the biggest drawback for me is this is what it's going to look like when it's on the car. So the threads are going to go all the way to the top of the nut here, but I'm going to have this little extra area sticking out the top because this has our hex key so that we can tighten these down. And while it looks really sporty on something like a Porsche, on the Mini, I think it looks a little silly and it's not quite the aesthetic. I'm going for so I might get these torqued down and be happy with them and cut the head off Because if I have to take them back off for some reason what you can do is you can do two nuts on here and Tighten them together and then I can back off this bottom nut So if I have to take them back off I can so while it's not as easy a way to install them And it's going to be more difficult to get a proper torque on it but once they're installed, it shouldn't be an issue, and I don't expect to ever take them back off. But I might leave them the way they are. We'll see once they're mounted on the car how I feel about it, and if it bothers me that much, that'll be something we address in the future. Now, they have instructions on ECS Tuning's website on how they want these tighten these down. They want them tightened to seven foot-pounds, and while I do not have my inch-pound torque wrench here, conveniently, from this axis point right here to the end of this handle is 12 inches, so this is one foot. So if I apply seven pounds of force to this handle here, it is going to apply seven foot-pounds to the stud. Now these do not need to be tightened down very tight. The only reason you're tightening them down at all is just to keep them in place. Stretch of the stud as it gets pulled by the nuts to clamp down the wheel and the hub, that's what's going to hold your wheel on. So you don't have to worry, you don't want to crank these down too tight if you tighten them down too much. As you apply load to this, it's going to lean this off axis. So you want these just tight enough to stay, but not too tight. So only a little bit of torque is required. Most companies, if they don't include this little end here, you don't even have a torque spec. You just have to tighten it down to a reasonable level. 
And we're going to be using a medium thread locker because, again, we might need to take these off if the hubs go bad or something like that. We don't want to be fighting with the red thread locker. But EZS Tuning was nice enough to send this out for me. So, again, if you guys want some for your Mini or BMW or Porsche or Volkswagen or whatever, check out EZS Tuning. This is how it's going to come. So they just have a bunch of these little nuts and a nice little string of packages. Same thing for the studs. So I'm sure you could order a replacement individually. You call them, you say, hey, I lost one or broke one or I messed up the threads or whatever happened. You could get yourself a replacement. All you're gonna need to install this is a thread locker, either a M5 or 3 16 seven inch Allen key. And then of course, whatever size nut you need. So mine is 17, both for the wheel bolt and the nut, which is convenient. So let's go down to the car and we're going to swap all these out. While I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to just unbolt the bolt one at a time and put the studs in, I'm going to go ahead and jack up the car, remove each one of the wheels and just do it with the wheel off the car. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but when it's something safety like this, I just think it's a good idea to go ahead and be safe now instead of on the side of the highway with only your wheels missing. I just wanted to give a quick before and after. So this is what the wheel looks like with the normal wheel bolts. They kind of hide, disappear inside the wheel. It just goes unnoticed. And then back here with the studs. I mean, they don't jump out like a lot, a lot. But if you notice them, they might look a little weird to someone who doesn't understand what they are. So I'm not in love with them. But at the same time, they're not as bad as I was expecting. I still think it doesn't really go along with the look of the car. But we'll see if it grows on me or not. So you can see right here the broken wheel stud. So we'll pop the wheel spacer off. And so here's where the wheel bolt broke. Nice and clean. I mean, just sheared right off. Didn't even know it snapped. Just noticed it one day. So that's a little scary. So that's our main motivation for why we're upgrading to studs. Is I don't want to deal with that anymore or worry about it. I want to just be able to get my car drive and be relaxed. So now that we have everything out of the way, car's jacked up nice and safe. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of these studs right here. Apply just a little bit of the medium strength thread locker. Just like that. Not a whole lot. Just enough. Just a little dab there. Just to make sure... It's not going to go anywhere. Get it started by hand. So it's bottom out, and you can see we're starting to turn the rotor. So what we're going to do is use this screwdriver here, stick it. So now that the rotor can't move because it's trapped underneath the rotor, we can tighten this down. Doesn't take a whole lot. And so we'll do that three more times, get the wheel on, and we can torque it down with our nut to 90 foot-pounds. So now that they're all torqued to 90 foot-pounds, what we're going to do is I'm going to take it, I'll drive it around a little bit, come back, check the torques again just to make sure everything is still happy once it's all settled in. It should be perfect, it should be fine, but it's just a good idea to keep an eye on it. And then I'm going to check it one week from now just to make sure again everything is still where it should be. I don't expect any sort of movement, but it might settle a little bit. Better to be safe than sorry. As I said before, I don't dislike them as much as I thought I would. I still don't love this look. It might grow on me. I mean, it's a little sporty and track looking, but I think it's still subtle enough that the average person won't even notice. Of course, if you guys have any questions, drop those down in the comments below. I will have a link to the ECS tuning website where you can get these exact studs for your car. They've got them for all sorts of different European makes. So go ahead and check them out if you need wheel studs for your Mini or other European car. And remember, please hit that subscribe button, drop some comments below, and I will see you guys next week.